pages 1 through 6. Do I entertain a motion to approve? No motion. Motion made by Commissioner Hammond. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Commissioner Vickers. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Uh, All opposed, same sign, 5 up. Moving to public works. Number one on public works is approval of the Florida Department of Environmental Protection Comprehensive Agreement for Repair to the County Road, which was damaged during implementation of the traffic doctrine. summer of 2010, I guess from July to December, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection and the Fortis Group did some petroleum cleanup on the station at the corner of 221 and 90 They asked for permission through a per to a permit through DEP, or through, uh, excuse me, Department of Transportation, to use Highway 140 and 150 back to 90 for a detour to avoid that construction area. 140 had just been resurfaced through a uh, reimbursement plan through DOC. It was a brand new road. And, uh, our agreement was if they did any damage to the road, they would replace whatever damage they did. After everything was through, DOT contacted us, wanted to know what damage we had. We went out and made some measurements, took some photos, and sent to them what we wanted repaired. After that, uh, the DEP requested we meet in Greenville with DOT and the town of Greenville to see who had damage and what needed to be fixed. So we met with them, showed them what we needed to be fixed, and they requested that we get three quotes from three different contractors to make repairs on Highway 140. At the time, uh, we're planning to resurface 150 if we have enough funds up the brick on 150. And there wasn't a lot of damage on 150 anyway. So, we um, got three quotes from three different contractors to do the repairs we feel like necessary to put the road back as close to original condition as we can. And, uh, the Scruggs Company was the lowest bid for $33,685.08. And DEP has uh, agreed with the contract to pay us that amount of money for us to get the Scruggs Company to repair that road back to original condition. So we're asking for permission to accept that contract. That would be my motion, Madam Chairman, that we go to recommendation of the first speaker. I'll second that. Motion made by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Vickers. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, same sign, by vote. Uh, right on to um, line. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you, you guys did a a good job of the new following through with the people that did the paving for the different roads that we had. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Unfinished business. We don't have anything. <coughs> new business. We're, we're going to go into the 4 o'clock public hearing to approve ordinance recognizing that the legislation has permitted the regulation of firearms and immunity to the state. Mr. Attorney. Um, Madam Chairman, uh, this is an ordinance that I prepared has been properly noticed today uh, for public hearing. Um, what this involves is the legislature in this past session passed a statute that um, reaffirmed that the legislature had preempted all regulation of ammunition and firearms to the state. And by preemption, what that means is that the state can regulate it, but we are not allowed to regulate it when we pass uh, county ordinances dealing with it. And what they also did this past legislative session is they added to that statute a cause of action for damages where someone can sue the county if they feel that there is an ordinance that regulates firearms or if they think we're trying to enforce a county ordinance that regulates firearms. And a lawsuit, get damages, attorney's fees, and all of that. Now that doesn't go in effect until October 1. So what my advice to you was, let's go ahead and enact an ordinance that uh, repeals uh, any possible county ordinance or resolution that might attempt to regulate firearms, and therefore we would have preempted if someone was trying to bring that kind of a cause of action. Um, and we're here in September doing it, so before the October 1 date, where that law would come from. And that's how the ordinance got here. The ordinance itself is declared by its packet. 
um, the whereas clauses or the recitals are on page one and two, and they just kind of recite how we got here. If you look after the part that says be ordained, um, start at number two, that paragraph um, says the county ordinances which regulate or attempt to regulate firearms and ammunition, uh, that they are uh, repealed to the extent they attempt to regulate. Number three says all other county rules and or regulations, regardless of name or designation, are likewise repealed to the extent they uh, try to subreg to the extent they try to subregulate. Number four, the county officers and officials are authorized and directed to immediately and forever cease any enforcement of those county ordinances, rules, and regulations. And then number five lists the exceptions. In the statute, there were exceptions, and I just copied them here verbatim that um, ordinances such as generalized zoning ordinances that encompass firearm businesses along with everything else. So, for instance, if you've got a, in your future land use map, if it doesn't allow any business in a certain area, then that's fine. You can exclude a, a, a gun shop just like you could, a, you know, any other kind of shop. And so that's, you know, how that means. Number uh, B is um, that it doesn't apply, whereas it, it still allows us to regulate the carrying of firearms by our own employees to the extent we might have any that carry firearms, and I honestly don't think we, we do because the sheriff's office is not going to be under us in that, to that extent. And the rest of us will apply. So that's, uh, that's how we got here. So Madam Chairman, I wish you open it up to the public, see if there's any public comment, and then let the board uh, make its decision. At this time, I'd like to open it up to the public for any concerns or issues that they would like to address. I understand what you, what's happening, and it's a protection. My question has to do with the ability of the county, for example, to insist on checking of a purchase. Is that only federal law? Do we have to wait for state law? And uh, the th con thing that concerns me is anyone being able to buy a gun, not just you know people who don't have a mental problem or don't have drug addiction, don't have a criminal record. So does, and I'm not sure if the state is very careful about this sort of thing. So does this mean the county has no power to um, do any regulation about the purchase and registration and checking with the federal uh, database on sales? Um, businesses are already required to do that. For instance, if I have a, if I have a rifle, let's say, and I go pawn it, um, they, they don't check you when you put the rifle in there, but if you go try to take it back, they have to run your name and make sure you don't have a felony and, and those types of things. That's already being done, and that's and that's not due to any county regulation. That's a federal state. Uh, and the enforcement of that is done by our local police? Yes, and, and this ordinance doesn't uh, affect their ability to enforce state and federal laws. They can do that right now no matter what we do. All this is saying is that, that we're repealing any ordinances that might attempt to regulate in those areas where the legislature's told us we're not allowed to regulate. I think that's great protection. And I like the assurance that any gun transaction, particularly roadside sales by individuals, are, and that's not even federal law yet, but possibly Madison County could require that any sales between individuals that are, is, it, for example, like a roadside sale, which I have seen, not here, but other places, would also have to be checked. We could make some kind of control over that. Well, this ordinance doesn't do that. I'd, I'd have to investigate. We're free to do that, though. I would think probably not, because okay. this statute is saying it prohibits our regulation of firearms or ammunition sales exchanges, et cetera, et cetera. So. I keep hoping. Okay. Do we have any other comment from the public on this issue? If not, I would like to turn it back over to the board for discussion. Okay, the motion is in order of uh, the motion to approve this ordinance. I'll see. Motion made by Commissioner Hammond, second by Commissioner Vickers to approve the ordinance. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, the same sign. Four. 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 Four.
two approval of fiscal year 2010 state aid to the library grant agreement. Mr. Danny Hale. Okay. Here's your two originals, Mr. Clark. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Madam Chair, Commissioners, this is routine. This is our request to the State Library that they send us money next year. I think we want to do it. <laughs> I don't yeah, I think I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope they'll budget some. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Do I have a motion to approve the agreement? Motion. motion made by Commissioner Hamrick. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Commissioner Victors. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Uh, uh, all opposed, same sign. 4-0. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Tim told me y'all had a real short meeting today, so he asked me to do it. <laughs> 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 two hours. <laughs>
charge a fee for um, making metal pictures as opposed to ceramic. Uh, I just have one question. Um, I have gotten some calls from some uh, providers as far as schools and also uh, child care centers. <coughs> they are being charged $150 for an inspection, an environmental inspection. Okay. Explain um, that to me, please, so I can explain it to them. Yeah, I don't know offhand which ones are um, <coughs> uh, statutory fees. I can look it up and find out and get back with you. Would you please? You. Would you please? Yes, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Said it's child care. Yes, and for environmental. And it's $150. And when they come out, apparently what they do is just check the, um, the yard and things of that nature. Most of them are very small business owners, and that's pretty steep for them. Okay. So if you can get back with me and let me know some um, clarity on that. Okay. All right. Are they state mandated or where, how is it done? Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. Colleen, you said there wasn't no increase at all of them. Um, all on right. the fee schedule? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there were no increases. Except for the one where we added for the dentures. Okay. All right. Madam Chairman, you, you've only um, got on your agenda the contract. Uh -huh. So if you want to do the contract and the resolution, you probably need to amend the agenda and okay. take care of both of them. You see the, the fees? We only have the contract here. We don't have the contract on the agenda. The fees is a separate resolution okay. that the board has to enact approving the fees. I mean, it was all in the packet, so I think you can properly consider it today, but you need to amend the agenda to, to go ahead and do both. Right. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to amend the agenda. Motion made by Commissioner Hamlet to amend the agenda <coughs> to include the fees with the contract. I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Vickers. Any other discussion? You want them to get back with you before we vote on this? Or? I, well, that was one of the reasons you, because I thought we were just going to work on the contract, and it would have given me more time to look at some of the fees and some of the things that, that they had allocated to us, even though some of the fees was not increased. increased some other fees were added that I, I needed clarity on. It. So that's why I was going to let them vote on just the contract, but not approving the fee scale, okay. even though that was in the contract. Is there, a, is there a statutory limit or anything on when we need to, a, a time limit that we need to have? Schedule? Yeah. No, no. What, what fees do you need to know? I just explained to you the environmental fees, which was an increase, whether it was state mandated or locally. And then also some of the other fees, whether or not they were increased. I didn't get a chance to finish looking at all the fees. Did you? Did you? Well, I mean, I'm looking through it now. All this deals with it is basically uh, medical exams, stuff of that nature, not on-site visits. No, I'm talking about facility. fees to go outside no, of it. Oh, yes, okay. it does. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I apologize. That's all right. Yeah, on the fee schedule, um, okay. there's only $75 for the group care inspection annual fee. There's not a fee for child care. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a state mandated. Yeah. But that's what I, I wanted clarity on it. Now, I understand the regular fees that that's pretty much hasn't changed, the doctor's visits and things of that nature. I don't have a problem with that. I just needed a little clarity, and if I could get with you to get clarity on something. Sure. I, I want to re-agenda the, the fees for next week, and then that way we... Yes. If I can get a motion for that? To re does that, does that work? I mean, that works for the All-Star Statement. Well, I yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, we have a, a motion on floor to come in. Do you want to rescind that motion? Yes, I'll so rescind my motion. Second, Mr. Hooker and Mr. Hodges. And then that's it, Gil. Yes, yeah. we'll just be doing on the contract. Just, we'll which, is, which is on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll just do that for the contract. And I'll get with you on the fees. Sure. And some other fees that I just want to clarify on. Okay. Right. So, That'll be my motion okay. is to approve the contract. Motion made by Commissioner Chairman to approve the contract. Second by Commissioner Vickers. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by. Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Four. Thank you. And welcome. This is a new job for you. Uh, yes, ma'am. And we'll Thank you. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh.
Okay. Number four, request from back then. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Um, if I can, if I, if I may, I'll turn it over to Mr. Chair. Um, it's kind of situation on Kevin Road, Kevin Trail, or whatever it is. There's a fence on it now, and we don't have a um, maintenance map, library map, whatever the proper terminology is. And, uh, our attorney said before we do anything, we need to have that um, before we can proceed to decide what we want to do about the fence. And, uh, I can't tell. And I think the cost is probably going to be twenty-five hundred to three thousand dollars for maintenance. Uh, Ronnie got that in their budget, and we're going to pull it from somewhere else. I'm going to do that. Ronnie. I'd have to look. Yeah. His budget's tight. I don't know. I mean, yeah. we, we may have it, you know, if we start in the new year or something. But yeah, I've, got, I've got some left in mind. I've got some. like $7,500 left in mind. Yeah. And that was a question. That. And the reason I said that, that was a yeah. question. I want to do a survey on the road. And was it said, Mr. Clerk, that we couldn't take money out of that? Out of your out of your portion of money that each commission get? Out of the fifth, you're talking about out of the fifth and sixth. Out of the fifth and sixth. Um, that's what I thought, but then I kind of was told that I couldn't do it. It's so I'm just, I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, if it's, you want to do a survey on the road as, as part of a maintenance map or as part of a, a project to move forward with a paving. I guess the question will be is either way. It, yeah. It'll be a county road. So either yeah. way, whether it was a, to pave it or whether it was just to find out what kind of ride we had on it. Which would be a maintenance map. We're yeah, which would be a maintenance map. For either, yeah. either way. Um, What's your suggestion? I, I think with this small amount of money, I could probably go ahead and approve it. Well, we'll do a budget we'll amendment next time if we need to. Okay. Um, and let us look and see about that fifth and sixth cent. My instinct is you probably can uh, do that for a maintenance map, but let us check just to be absolutely sure uh, before we go taking money out of that gas tax yeah. fund. Just to put it into a budget amendment if we need it. Okay. For catnip, and is there another one? That's it. Okay. That's your motion. Yeah, that'd be my motion. I'll second that. Motion made by Commissioner Hammond, second by Commissioner Vickers. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Uh, All opposed, same sign, 4 0. And, what, and, and what's going to happen? Are you going to look into it whether or not we can use that money for the maintenance? Out of that gas tax. Okay, gotcha. All right. Number five, request for a sheriff office. Ms. Williams. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Um, my reasons for um, attempting to move to the new building, first of all, it'll be more space for us. Um, you can really see that we'll need space when it's time for election. Now you see that we're um, preparing for the 2012 election cycle, and we're stumbling and walking over each other's feet, trying to make sure we prepare everything and lay everything out. Um, also, better protection of equipment from the weather. And what I mean by that, if we were able to get that new building, we were able to use the garage and park in the garage, especially whenever it's raining, taking our equipment in and out. The equipment is very costly, being that we will be um, purchasing new equipment to meet the ADA compliance. We'll be probably spending around three to $400,000. And I would hate to put the equipment in jeopardy by putting it in the rain or that kind of stuff. Also, um, the equipment will be more secure because it be in one location at this time. It is secure, but I would feel more comfortable, me, myself, having a hold of my lock and key at all times. My lock and key. Um, now we have it stored upstairs, and upstairs is not the best, but it is the best that we have at this time. So if we were able to be in one location with all my equipment up under my eyes, I would feel more comfortable. Um, increased safety, and the reason why I say more safety, um, better safety because the space is an issue and whenever we're tripping over, you know, each other feet or tripping over, you know, things in the office that's on the floor trying to prepare, you know, sometimes you get individuals, they want to sue or, you know, they want to, you know, go out on medical leave, so I don't want that to happen. Um, also, during the election cycle, whenever we have the canvassing board in, if we're able to have a canvassing board in that one big room in the um, 